more gadgets and gizmos here. How do we sort through all this crap? Looks like a table full of stuff. So Michael. we talked about you know vocal mics before, but we've got we've got other things that need a microphone. Some do some do some don't. So we have mics that we need to choose from and DIs that we need to choose from to get the rest of our band rocking with signal and sounding good. So we just yeah. wanted to talk a few minutes about microphone types, techniques for miking before we get to a console and talk about how to mix right. them. We need to figure out how to get the source right with placement and choices. Well, we really have a nice assortment here, don't we? We do. We have some Canadians, some Americans, some Germans, some Danish. Uh, what else? I, you know what? I like a good Danish. <laughs> you were probably thinking about a little different That's way, though. Oh, so you can't really eat that. No. So, what would you use this for? Boy, that's fragile. I've never used one of these, but uh, strings. Is this the guy that people yep. use on strings? Yeah. Strings. They, they have various clips that they provide with them yep. depending on the application. So you can have a clamp for an acoustic guitar. You can use or a uh, drum, a drum, or for a tom um, or a snare. What is Violin. this? What mic is this? This is a DPA four zero nine nine, and then I think they designate each one a little differently depending on the clamp yeah. that comes with it. Uh, so, I recently switched to these for toms. Okay. Which was a little bit different departure from you guys what you would think I would use, and uh, it's really interesting that the same element used for like a drum is the same element you put on a on a nice violin or a cello or yeah, or, or something very delicate. Yeah, yeah. Um, it just goes to show though that you can't write off a microphone just because of you think it has one application. So like these, uh, Sennheiser six hundred two and the Beta fifty two. Most people, this is a kick mic. Assume kick drum right. only. Yeah. You guys use these on anything else? Uh, any kind of large drum or. A, like uh, anything that just kind of feels like it needs a little more boom to it. Yep. I've, there used, are times it on a, I've used it on the bottom of a B3 cabinet, yep. like a, a Leslie cabinet. Bass guitar cabinet. Bass guitar. Bass guitar cabinet. So like this guy, the Beta 57, you want to unthread that? Yeah. And I'll unthread this one. Let's Check see, if, this out. see if they look any, uh, see how different they look. Yeah, this will blow your mind. Huh. Samesies. Almost cool. the same. Very similar. It's amazing what you can get away with with some of these different microphones. Um, well, the cool thing is we talked about you know the importance of the source. I think you know a good test for somebody someday would be just to see how far you could get by putting some, a mic like this on everything. Oh, that and mic you, would be awesome on everything. Yeah, everything on stage. And if you fine. can't, if you can't, like I've I've heard old bar band engineers or club guys who would say, if you can't get a great mix on having these on all your drums, then either the drums are wrong or yeah. you're wrong. Yeah. Well, one of the first recording projects I ever did, uh, the only thing I had left was a 58, and I put it in the kick drum, just laid it in there. And to this day, I listen to that mix and go, that's the best sounding kick drum ever. And it was just no stand or anything. It was literally laying on the pillow. But this, this mic, this is the Earthworks SR20 LS. They have a version of this that's a vocal mic. Really? Yeah, and I use this in the kick drum. So this is another one I switched to lately, and it's it's like that does not look like something you put in a kick drum, right? Right, right. Compared to what we all normally would would associate with it, but I put this in and was like, I'm not switching back. So it was kind and of interesting. This replaced two microphones. For that you. replaced two microphones for me, so I didn't have to do. What's the combination we normally do? Like a 91, 91 a and a 52 or, or, yeah. or, a, or a D6 or something. Um, so putting that in had enough high end and enough oomph. Um, but it's just trying it, trying all this different stuff to see what works best. So are these pretty durable? I think if you don't hit them. Yeah, so like the, <laughs> this is a Tom mic, the Sennheiser 609. Yeah. This one's been beat to death. Yeah. Yeah. And it still it works. It still works. Yeah. So I think that's probably part of the decision too. It's yeah. If your guy's gonna flail around a lot, right? Maybe that's this a is better the, one to put in. No finesse option. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. So. But the cool thing is, for quick setup though, it's just a clamp it know, on, clamp and go. Yeah. And you're you're right. you're done. So. Yeah. And they actually market this as a tom mic. Yeah. Because I don't know if that's gonna clamp onto much else. So. They've, right. They've built it to be beat. Yeah. You can put those on guitar cabinets too. I've done that. 
You know, like clip that to the edge? Yeah, something like that. Some gaff tape and yeah. <laughs> whatever. Whatever. Make it work. DIs. DIs. So I think this is a little different in that, you know, we got the cheapest microphone on the table, these two, can be used for about anything. Yeah. And it's really great. Right. This is a radial DI. It's really heavy and it's pretty expensive when you compare them to other DIs. Right. But this is like the standard in the professional world. And it's built like a tank. It is built like yeah. a tank. I could drop this thing right now and it will work. Still work. Yeah. It will work. The $30, 40 $50 DIs that you get from your, a magazine or your local music store, how long do those things last? Well, and if you ever open up one of those inside, it's just a cheapo transformer like you used to be able to get at Radio Shack. Gotcha. That's actually got some real guts to it. Yeah. And it's Lee, Radio right. Shack is a store that used to exist. You could Radio go and Shack. buy all kinds of is that DIY where, kind of electronic equipment. If you look it up, you might be able to find it. You know, Is that where the Unabomber lived? The Radio Shack? <laughs> yeah. right. Although this was bought at uh, the Radio Radial Shack. Shack. Radio yeah. Shack. So <clears throat> that's got it. good. Perfect. But that, So that one's a um, stereo version. Yep. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. So for anything that's stereo, keyboards, all that kind of thing, pop one of those down and you're already ready to rock. Yeah. The great thing about most DIs that are of good quality is that you've got things like ground lift switches and pads and things like that that are built in yeah. so that if you have the need for attenuation or anything like that, you can click in the pad. You know, if you have uh, any sort of ground loop issues, you hit the ground switch and hopefully, yeah. you know, clean up some noise. Because good. all bass guitars buzz. <laughs> That's it just right. It happens. So Plan comes on in it. handy. Yeah. It's good. It's great. So, yeah. So I would always recommend not skimping on this. Right. Now you don't have to go buy a fifteen hundred dollar boutique tube studio quality yeah. recording DI. Sure, but I think having something that is really you know durable, stout. good quality, yeah. stout, makes a difference. Yeah. yeah.